If you've been buzzing around on social media lately, then you would see that there are so many riders adventuring with their friends and teammates, whether it's at a gravel event or a cross race. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about some of the things that you might consider adding to your quiver to make your time outside and at the events even more awesome. About a year ago, I picked up this Ford F-350. Besides a couple of slight modifications to make it more homely, work out of, and have fun with, I've generally kept it factory. Now, whether you're riding and using one of these vans to support your crazy cycling habit and wilding out, or you drive a 1990 Chevy Caprice like I used to back in the day with four bikes stuffed in the trunk, it doesn't matter. All the stuff that I'm gonna talk about today is something that you could modify to make fit what you need to get out there and have a beautiful day. Look at it. She's beautiful. And she won't die. She is still there. sharp. No, She's weathered strong. a lot of storms, man. It's 2010. Like first things first, you wanna make sure that you know the lay of the land. You're coming into the expo or the event area. You wanna make sure that you don't go into some place that they've sent you that's like muddy, nasty, has a ton of water all over the place. Look for a place that either has pavement or a nice area where there isn't a ton of water. You don't wanna be on the bottom of a hill so when someone's spraying off their bike or they're pouring out their beers after they've had a couple, that it's coming downstream and coming into your area. First thing I like to do after I've picked out where I'm gonna set my truck up, where I'm gonna set my tent up, no mud, nothing like that, I like to put up my window shades because having been to a lot of bike races over the years, I know about you cyclists. You guys like to get changed in your cars and everybody's looking at your booty. You don't wanna do that. Not only is it weird, it's also illegal. So I always set up these because I don't want people peering in and I also don't wanna offend anybody. <laughs> Another thing, whether you've got a big car or a small car, is a 10 by 10. 10 by 10 tents you can buy anywhere. In the United States, it's a prerequisite if you're out there adventuring. I got one with walls. Sometimes when you're on the pro scene, you see two or three or even six of these kind of lined up to create a big space. Essentially, you would be able to hang out with your friends, stay nice and warm, heckle people from the sidelines. If you're out in a gravel event, you can put the barbecue outside, people will come in, stay out of the sun, whatever. It's a really good thing to throw in the back of your car. Last thing about your tent, you wanna make sure that you stake it down. A big gust of wind, local regulations, you always wanna make sure that you've either got some sandbags or you've been able to tap some stuff into the ground to keep the tent from blowing away. And who wants to lose a nice tent? Nobody. Another really nice to have, although not essential, but you definitely can get brownie points with your friends if you have it, is a nice little generator like this Honda 2000. One strike, boom, she's up and running. She'll power your pressure washer. All you need is the water source, a little bucket with some water, power your air compressor over there to spray your bike off, power your phone up if you need to get that a charge, or if you need to power some speakers or something like that. These are great for a ton of stuff, makes it really easy to get around, move and shake, keep everybody powered up. So we have this little air compressor from Makita that we brought with us on the road. It's a sweet little unit. If you're doing tubeless tires a lot, making the switches, this would be super nice to have. Powers right off that little generator, very nice. Also, when the bikes are wet and it's cold outside, you bring them into this warmer environment here and you're able to spray all that water off on them. They dry quicker, a little bit nicer. It doesn't beat up on the bearings as much and keeps the chain nice and shiny. So if you're balling, check out a little air compressor. It's good to have a little table here that your mechanic or yourself could work out of. Basically just put your tools out on top so you can work here on your bike. All this stuff from Park Tool, the PV1, this stand folds down to practically nothing. It's more than enough space if you've got a car. It's also like takes up nothing if you've got a bigger car like a minivan or an actual van. You're gonna get a lot of brownie points with your friends if you have a way to heat the inside of your tent. So. Definitely wanna check with your local regulations. You wanna make sure you have any permits or anything necessary before you go doing this. I do not recommend it, especially if it's illegal wherever you're from. But in the States, oftentimes, we put these inside the tents and then we come back from that cold day out on the cyclocross bike or watching that nasty springtime gravel race. It's real simple, you just Got some heat, you and your friends can sit in here and heckle away kind of a no-brainer, but I also like to bring a cooler with me so that I can keep cold drinks. If it's warm out, cool drinks are nice to have. Also to be able to keep the food that I made for after the race so it doesn't spoil. I also always bring some muck boots so that way I'm able to venture out into the uh, wild of cyclocross and gravel races that happen. And then I always bring a couple chairs so that I can sit and spectate, keep my hands warm and chat, hang out with my friends.
Carlo, Carlo, ho, ho! Can never forget about the trash can. Trash can super poor. You don't want your friends throwing trash all over the place. One of these portable trash cans that folds right up. I also like beating up on my friends in a game of garbage basketball. Another nice thing to have is a little hatchway to get back to your vehicle. This ultra top secret Scooby-Doo style door brings you back to your vehicle. No one can see. If you've got a van or a minivan, then having a tiered system like this is really cool. I was able to have my father-in-law help me build out this. You can hang out on it, relax. It's not what I do. Actually, this is where I rack my bikes. And then I'm able to uh, put everything that we use, the tents, the heating, power washers, all that stuff goes underneath here. So bikes up top, this stuff underneath. Whether you've got a car, a sedan, or you've got a van, a minivan, whatever it is, having a tiered system is something that everybody should aspire to. It helps a lot and makes the organization of a uh, race day or a uh, event a lot nicer to use and work out of. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at some of the things that I bring to a big race or an event or adventure that I go out on. This stuff doesn't need to cost you a million bucks. All of this stuff, I mean, excluding the generator, is not very expensive stuff. It's stuff that you could pick up at a local hardware store or make yourselves and truthfully just get really creative with it. Um, overall, I really like to become more and more prepared as I got into my cycling more and more. Having this organization, having these things, made all that training and effort in getting my bike prepped and going to the mechanic and having that all worked on, it just made my time out that much more enjoyable and I think it will do the same for you. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment below, let us know what your setup is like and what you can't leave the house without for the races. If you guys wanna see more content like this, please check out these videos down here and if you wanna to subscribe to GCN, click right in the center. Center.